Hi, welcome to the Ortega Path to Enlightenment. Uh, my name is George Ortega, and this is the first episode of a new series where we're going to explore the concept of enlightenment. We're going to like learn what it what it is to become enlightened, and um, and to become I think because I think enlightenment is more of a matter of de degrees. So I had to become more enlightened. Um, okay, now. Before we start, this is not like a show about the Enlightenment. The Enlightenment was a period, you know, a few hundred years ago where we moved from basically understanding our world according to what some guys a long time ago said was the case to, to using science and reason. You know, in other words, we shifted from creationism with Adam and Eve, 6,000-year-old world, to science, to like, you know, understanding that our universe is 14 billion years old, etc. Okay, so this, this is not about that. This is more about, this is about this, what, what Wiki describes as the spirit, spiritual enlightenment, okay? Um, now, spiritual, I'm a materialist. I believe that everything is actually material, so spiritual is, I, I would define it as that aspect of our material reality that we don't have access to. We may never have access to, we certainly, you know, like dark matter, dark energy, some, some, some parts of our reality, you know, the, the substance of our consciousness, you know, some parts of our reality, we just, you know, we, 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 we know it's there, but we can't measure it like we do with physical objects. Okay, um, now, this, this um, enlightenment, there, there are certain terms in Buddhism, in, Hinduism and Jainism that are somewhat similar to enlightenment. Uh, terms like Bodhi and Nirvana and Mukti, okay? So these, these, these um, terms are similar to enlightenment, but not exactly the same. In future episodes, we're going to get into the details of what the differences are and what the similarities are also, okay? Because, um, yeah, like these, um, see, the, those other, like the terms Bodhi, Nirvana and Mukti have been around, you know, for over 2,000 years, whereas where the, the, the word enlightenment has been around for only um, uh, several hundred years. It's, you know, it was derived from a German uh, word, um, so I, I think it appeared maybe in the 1600s or so. Okay, um, so now the, the, the enlightenment we're going to explore has, um, you know, um, it can be seen biologically, psychologically and philosophically. Okay, we're not going to like really get into too much speculation into, for example, what happens after we die, you know, um, what happened, you know, do we have a soul that exists eternally? I mean, we will get into some of that, but, you know, um, we'll, we'll focus more on what we can be much more sure of, what, what, what seems much more apparent. Okay. So, all right, so like what I'm going to do during this series is, is give my conception of what I believe enlightenment is because this is important because um, enlightenment, if, if you try to like search for it on the internet, you'll notice that it's a somewhat nebulous term. There, there aren't that, there, there isn't really a definitive definition of enlightenment. There, there hasn't been a de definitive attempt to define uh, enlightenment. Um, so this this series is actually gonna, one of the one of the goals is going to be to try to do that. Try to just um, just basically come up with a um, a rational um, collection of ideas, concepts, attributes that would globally make sense as enlightenment. Um, so, but here's here's some of the the, the terms that that you'll find uh, when people say enlightenment. Sometimes what they mean. Some people say that to be enlightened is to expand one's consciousness. Okay, so then the question becomes, all right, I, I think we're always expanding one, our consciousness, you know, I think every, every day of our lives. So then the question becomes, all right, at what point um, in that process can we, you know, consider ourselves enlightened? Um, and again, I think this, this, this matter of enlightenment is really more a matter of degrees, you know, in other words, one can be somewhat enlightened, um, more enlightened, and some. There, there. I think there's the case for um, some of us just not being in, enlightened at all, not not falling into that category. Okay. Um, so another another definition of enlightenment is to understand accurately the nature of reality. 
okay? Um, and that makes sense, you know, like in other words, like if one believes in a flat earth or a sun that revolves around earth, you know, that doesn't seem very enlightened. And that actually has a similarity to that age of enlightenment. So like, you know, it's not as if they're uh, completely different terms. Okay, um, another one is like to, be, to become one with the universe, God, or a higher power. And um, yeah, that makes sense to, to, to be at one, to, to kind of like to, um, I mean like with this one, if you, if you consider that like, you know, the entire universe, you know, about two trillion galaxies um, were once compressed to the size of like, you know, an atom. Um, then, then you kind of like understand how yes, we're we're a part of that, and we're, it's it's all one, and we're, we're you know we're a part of that one, um, and and I, I, we can feel you know that's you know that's a part of enlightenment that I haven't you know delved into all that much myself. I mean I think we can sense that, but but that's that makes sense as a as an attribute of enlightenment um, to realize that everything is connected, and that's that's a very similar concept to to discover one's place, meaning, and role in the universe. Okay, that's important because like we, you know, I think what this refers to is that we have these societal roles we take on. We're a writer or a construction worker or a doctor or engineer, a salesperson, whatever. We have these roles. We, we, we assume various roles in our life. But that's, you know, we have, I think, a more fundamental role or roles um, beneath that. And, and, then, and then also it's about meaning, you know, so what's the meaning of our lives? Um, okay, to attain higher knowledge, knowledge is like, you know, everything is knowledge, and I think the higher knowledge probably pertains to happiness and goodness, you know, how to become happier and happier, and how to become more and more virtuous, um, so that makes a lot of sense, um, and then there's some, yeah, um, higher knowledge could include, like right now, you know, we, we can only guess at what happens after we die. I imagine in the future that won't be an open question. I think I imagine in the future that might be a question that might be answered. So that that would you know be a higher form of knowledge. Okay, I think um, fundamentally you know to escape suffering that that makes a lot of sense. When when Buddha the Buddha kind of like came up with his system, the Four Noble Truths, suffering was at the heart of it. Basically, he was saying, well, life includes suffering. And there is a way to overcome suffering. Because, like, again, like, happiness really is the most fundamental and highest goal that, that we have as human beings. Not, not just our happiness as individuals, but the happiness of everyone, and, and ideally the happiness of all sentient beings. Um, greater, greater and greater happiness. Okay, so, so that makes a lot of sense. To be aware of your true nature, I think we went over that a bit before. You know, who are we beneath? these roles we take on beneath the conditioning of our societies and our civilization. Uh, to be free of judgment, I think this comes with, um, with a knowledge of, of how the world works. In other words, like if we understand that we don't have a free will, I did a 216-episode uh, series on, on free will before this. If you understand that, no, free will is an illusion, it's a myth, then all of a sudden the rationale for judging, you know, blaming anyone or yourself just vanishes. I mean, it's just so, uh, it doesn't mean we don't hold each other accountable because we have to like to, to kind of uphold our morals and our laws, but by being free of judgment, we interact with ourselves and others in a much more intelligent and compassionate way. And again, to achieve ultimate bliss, so that's like, you know, the, the goal of escaping suffering as we move away from suffering, we're moving toward this like, you know, stronger and stronger degree of happiness that, that ultimately will result in a, in a bliss, you know, for, for all human beings and hopefully again for all sentient beings. I'm, you know, that seems a much more difficult, um, problematic concept, but certainly for, for the human species, that, that's something we can aspire to. Um, so this, this, is, this isn't really, you know, just about the enlightenment of we human beings as individuals, but also um, the, the enlightenment of everyone as a species, as a human species. Okay, so like, again, these definitions are, you know, for the most part correct, but they're not complete. So, you know, this show, this series is going to try to put them together 
and come up with, with you know, and like, you know, in a future episode, I'll be very definitive about what I believe the elements of enlightenment are, okay? Um, that's going to be the goal of the, the, this television series. I think the other goal is, like, once we know what these elements are, what are the steps? What are the steps to becoming happier? What are the steps to becoming more virtuous, to, to um, gaining the kinds of truths that we consider most important and useful to our society, our civilization, our species, our, our, you know, our planet? Okay, so what I'm going to do today is like just go through you know, what I consider are the elements of, of enlightenment and uh, it, I'm not gonna, it's not going to be an inclusive list. There's some that I'm going to leave out. You know, as we move week by week with this series, you know, I'll be presenting them one by one, and I may be including some that I haven't um, spoken about today. So, all right, so let's, let's start with happiness. Okay, we have to understand that happiness is our most fundamental goal in life. Again, next, the next episode we're going to deal with that because it's so important. Uh, smiling, you know, we talked about the biology of, of um, enlightenment. Now, this is something right. Smiling is extremely important to happiness. It's physiological. You smile, you feel better. Um, but, for example, like, if I'm walking down Mamaroneck Avenue or something like here in White Plains where we're doing the show, you know, I might be smiling, you know, a uh, closed mouth, pleasant facial expression kind of smile, and that boosts happiness, right? Now, it's, um, it's a different thing. It's a harder thing to kind of, like, talk while smiling. I've seen some people are good at it. I mean, sometimes it's, you know, because like I'm trying to focus on what I'm trying to say. So anyway, it's like smiling is very important to happiness. And like if we can like smile while we're, you know, doing whatever, while we're talking, while we're eating, that's ideal. But it takes practice. It's not easy. Um, and naturally with happiness, you know, the, the, the key to it is like to get in touch with the feeling then to extend it so it's like you're extending it moment by moment by moment. The, the moments become minutes, become hours, you know, days, weeks, you know. And then like while you're good at, at maintaining this, this experience of happiness, you also want to make it stronger and stronger. Just tap into it like, just like you would lift a weight, you know, exert more effort to lift a heavier weight. You want to make more effort to feel happier. It, it, it's not any more complicated than that. Okay, the next um, element of enlightenment that we're going to like uh, explore is goodness, morality. Okay, and morality is basically no more complicated than, than what makes oneself and others happy or happier. And again, includes not just human beings, but all sentient beings, you know, all the animals. So that's what goodness is really about. If something is good, it's making... And, um, and sometimes, like, you know, it gets complicated. Sometimes, well, something can make you good, but it may not make others feel good, or, and vice versa. So when we um, get into this, this um, episode on goodness, we'll explore that. Okay, again, non-judgment is, is a part of um, goodness. Compassion is a powerful... That, that's like, you know, compassion is, is like, you know, to understand that we're all sentient beings and we feel pain and, the, you know, we're good not just when we're helping other people to become happier, but also, of course, when we're helping people not to suffer, when we, when we show compassion toward others and also toward ourselves. Okay, veganism, very important, you know, because this is going to be, like, not just theoretical, philosophical. It's going to be very practical. In other words, like, you know, 2,000 years ago, um, animals were raised very humanely on farms where they could graze, you know, chickens had yards and stuff. Today it's a completely different um, scenario where basically these, these animals, our food animals, endure horrific amounts of pain, you know, and, and so like, you know, my answer is veganism. If we could like, for example, um, we, we actually know how to like culture meat in a lab, how to actually grow like a slab of meat, but right now the process is way too expensive. But, you know, anything we can do to, to, um, to spare the suffering of these animals. And again, I think veganism might not just be the, the most virtuous practice. It might actually be the healthiest. Again, we'll, we'll devote um, uh, an episode to that probably. This concept of noblesse oblige. Sometimes, like, like here in the United States, we are so fortunate compared to, like, you know, the one or two billion people on our planet who are the least fortunate, who, you know, have, don't have such 
you know, um, good access to clean water, to enough food, where they're, you know, they don't have um, advanced medical systems, and so they, they're plagued with diseases like malaria and you know, various other kinds of um, you know, medical problems. So like noblesse oblige, it's, it's the idea that like, you know, to those whom much is given, much is demanded. You know, we have been very fortunate, and it's, it's like a moral obligation to give back, to, to not continue to want more and more of what sometimes we already have too much of, let's say, in, in terms of material uh, possessions, but to think of those who, who don't even have enough to eat and, and, and um, drink and to, you know, to help them as much as we can. Um, another attribute um, of goodness is wisdom. You know, much of goodness is discerning what's good and what's not. Sometimes it's, it's um, relative. Sometimes what's good in one situation may not be good in, in another. Uh, sometimes what was once good may no longer be good and vice versa. So like wisdom, I think, is the ability to discern, you know, to just like figure out what is good, you know, in order to then pursue it. Um, okay, another, you know, aspect of goodness relates to happiness, just like to see happiness as an obligation. You know, that it's, we're, sometimes we think, think of happiness that, um, that it's, you know, a, a reward, something if we're lucky we have. But no, to, once we see it as an obligation also, then we have a moral imperative to become happy and to help others to become happy also. Um, then there's this idea of balance, you know, like goodness is good, but like, you know, martyrdom, self-sacrifice when it's too much, where you're kind of like sacrificing your life. Yeah, um, to do good, but like, you know, you're doing perhaps unnecessary pain, and a lot of the uh, pain is unnecessary. That's not good either. We, wa we want to love and be good to others. We want to love and be good to ourselves. Okay, um, then there are these political considerations. Climate change, um, you know, uh, goodness comes into that. I mean, like, you know, our, our planet is in a state of denial. I've, I've written two books on climate change, how to like finance the fight against it and how this notion of free will just keeps us in denial about it. So, um, so, and that's just one of a lot of political considerations where, where you know, to become enlightened, you really, I think there, there are right and wrong political views about that. And so we'll explore that in more detail. And finally, like, um, again, there's probably other aspects I haven't included, but for now, respect for others, you know, the fundamental respect, this idea that we're all fundamentally equal. You know, we may have abilities, talents that exceed those of others and vice versa, but we should all be not just treating each other, but, um, but considering each other and, and kind of like just behaving in a way where, where, we, um, where we express that, that, that idea of, of equalness. And, and I think, you know, like to kind of like see the best in it. I, we, we have a, a part of us, you know, that, that really wants to be really good, that, that always wants to be good. And of course, because we don't have a free will, we're not able to always do that. But that is fundamentally our essence. So it's part, part of it is to like see ourselves and each other, you know, in that way. Okay, I hope I get through this. I got like about nine minutes left. Okay, um, ne next is truth. To be enlightened, you know, you got to see reality for what it is. Um, for example, like, you know, if you, if you look at the, this table, or whatever, or, or me, or just like look at anything and, and you think that it's mainly solid, no, it's mainly empty space. Okay, so like enlightenment, uh, there's also like, you know, um, the, the concepts of eternity and infinity. It seems, it seems like our universe, our reality is both eternal and infinite. You know, the, 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 our, our known universe had a beginning, but then be, before the Big Bang, who knows what happened? And it'll probably, it, it seems, that, that it'll just go on forever and ever. So these, these are important co concepts because like, for example, in terms of happiness, you know, they, they can help put things in perspective. Sometimes we're worried about something, right? And when we consider the immensity and the, the eternity of the universe, all of a sudden, you know, what we're worried about or fearing doesn't seem all that, you know, much to be concerned with. I mean, you know, that's, again, that, that, um, that requires a lot more parsing out, but that, that's, you know, it's good to, 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 to keep things in perspective. Okay, um, philosophical truths, like, you know, again, like all beings are, are equal in value. You know, again, we may have like more of whatever than others, and they may have more of whatever than, than we, but this fundamental equality, I mean, it's in our um, Declaration of Independence, it's like, you know, it's important. Um, Again, for truth, seeing the true nature of reality, nothing is up to us. You know, everything is God's will. 
or if you're a, a naturalist, everything is the will of the universe. You know, I, I, I believe in God. I'm, I'm a theist. Um, I, I actually equate God with the universe. We'll get into that, you know, on a, on a future episode. But that's, you know, that's a clear way to see, you know, if God is everything, well, the universe is everything. I mean, all right. So again, like evolution instead of creationism. No, the world isn't 6,000 years old. The world is, you know, you know, this planet has been around for about 4 billion years, I believe, and the universe for almost 14 billion um, the Big Bang, you know, they used to like, not too long ago, they used to think that all these stars were like just stationary. They were just like, you know, that they had these fixed places in, in, in the universe and they were there eternally. Now we know, we understand that it all, you know, is expanding or inflating from, from this very, very, you know, um, this singularity, this very teeny point, which, I mean, it boggles the mind. I mean, think about it, like, a couple, they used to think that there were like two or three billion uh, galaxies now recently I think over the last year or so they've upped it to two trillion you know and, and so imagine all that you know matter energy all this stuff condensed into like you know the size of an atom I mean, it's really amazing okay um, so another truth is we we fundamentally seek pleasure and avoid pain this relates to happiness that's who we are that's who you know if there's any sentient beings and sentient beings started about three hundred million years ago with decapods you know uh, on animals like lobsters and crabs and stuff with 10 feet. Um, basically, all sentient beings seek pleasure and avoid pain. That's one of our fundamental motivations along with survival and all reproduction. But, you know, essentially that, that's what guides us and it's, it's important to know this. Um, so again, like, you know, our lives are relatively brief. It's good to, to maintain perspective. You know, we're all going to die, and, and like, you know, if we're afraid of dying, then that's, that's not very enlightened. You know, we, we got to come to terms with this and come to terms with, uh, I mean, I, I personally, you know, when, when we have a choice in what to believe, let's say we either, either nothing happens after we die or something happens, I, pr I prefer, I, I cultivate the belief that, like, we all go to uh, an infinite bliss. You know, I can't prove it. I can't even give evidence of it. But if there's like a, a, a one or the other proposition, I'm going to go with the one that makes me feel happiest. You know, that just, it, it, it's, a, it's kind of like a part of wisdom. Okay, then, um, yeah, we, we may, I don't know. Uh, there, um, we got to talk about love, okay? Love, you know, like Aristotle called happiness the highest good. I think love is the highest happiness. Love is really kind of like, you know, when you love someone, you want them to be happy. You know, you, you care about them. So, um, so we, you know, love is about overcoming the fear of others. If we're afraid of each other, we can't really love each other that much. Um, part of it is cultivating an interest in others, you know, an interest in who they are and what they're about. Um, we don't want to idolize people. We don't want to, like, you know, love someone and consider them, in, you know, fundamentally better than us or fundamentally better than, you know, like, you know, the Buddha, Jesus, Moses, you know, Abraham, all these guys. I mean, they're, you know, they were able to do certain things better than, than most of us. But again, just this, this um, they're not, they're not God. They're, they're, you know, we're human beings. Um, so we don't want to idolize each other. Um, so we want to see the good in everyone. And, um, Okay, um, and I think like, you know, higher forms of enlightenment require extroversion, require just a familiarity with people. Like, you know, if you, you can go out on a mountain and kind of um, become enlightened and, um, and that might be easy because like, you know, you're, you're alone, whatever, but like being enlightened and maintaining that enlightenment among people sometimes could be more challenging. So like, you know, being able to communicate with people and, 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 um, and explore this concept of enlightenment, exploring goodness and happiness and all that, you know, that relates to enlightenment. Okay, um, spirituality. Okay, we, uh, we need to understand that God exists. I do a podcast every Sunday with a, a bunch of atheists and I'm trying to get them to, to understand that no, like if you're trying to tell me that, that you think God doesn't exist, you're essentially telling me the universe uh, doesn't exist. Now, I know that may sound a bit cryptic or whatever to some of you, but I will, I will definitely devote uh, at least an episode to that. Okay, you know, so part of spirituality, you know, just um, seeing that we're all one, um, seeing us more as cooperators than competitors, uh, that we're all manifesting, again, the will of God. We don't have a free will. We strive to be in it. I'm going to talk more about that. Um, 
to see the good in everything. Okay, um, now another aspect, again, I'm, I'm trying to talk fast because we're almost done, and I, I want to get through at least this um, section. Um, the meditation, it's very important to meditate. You know, meditation really helps kind of like, it lowers our neural metabolism, so like we're, we're more calm, we stay calm. It's, it's, it's very good for both our emotional and physical health. And in terms of personal health, yes, like maintaining a, um, a healthy weight, just like eating well, exercising daily, that's important to enlightenment. You can't be really unhealthy and then with a lot of unhealthy you know, um, practices and call yourself enlightened. I don't, that make, doesn't make sense. Another concept that, again, it's, it's pretty complicated, but I'll get into it, um, is this feeling of being in, in this. Sometimes you ever feel like sometimes you're like, you're in the world, but you're not connected. Like, you know, you're not focused. You're just like, you know, flailing around. Your mind is like, you know, does, but sometimes you're, you're totally, you know, invested in what you're doing. Sometimes it's known as being in the zone or being, um, there's a term in psychology uh, known as flow, where you're so immersed in, in your activities, you, you kind of like lose sense of time. Okay, so those are like, you know, my elements of enlightenment for now. Um, in the next episode, I thought I'd, I'd be talking about happiness, but I haven't like really explored the techniques of, of enlightenment, which I think is important. And it actually does relate to happiness. So the next episode, we're going to like talk about how to become happier, what, you know, what we need to do to become happier. And then I, I guess um, the week after that, we'll get into like the main skill, the main technique of how to become um, happier. Um, so, all right, so this is George Ortega again, like this is the first of, of a series, and we will be, you know, just exploring what is this enlightenment, and, 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 and much more so than that, how do we, how do we achieve it? Um, let's say, um, eventually these shows will be on the internet, you'll, you'll be able to catch them on YouTube. So, all right, well, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time on the, Orte the Ortega Path to Enlightenment. Thanks.